I'm going to show a couple different features in K40 Whisper that uh, help align features and know where the head is relative to the design on your screen. So the first thing, um, I have a simple design pulled up here. It's just three circles, three plus signs uh, indicating the centers of those circles. So you see the outside, the page size of the SVG file is represented by the white box. The vector engraved and vector cut features are represented by the blue and red lines. So by default, the the laser head position is in the upper left corner of the design. So if we come over to here, th this is kind of helps you move around the, the design in the space. So the, the arrows will actually move the, the laser head um, to the left and right and up and down. And the corners will move the laser head from the upper left corner to the upper right corner and so on and, and you also have one for the center so that's kind of the simple way of moving around the image and then as again going back to default or in the upper left hand corner so the other thing that you can do is grab that little that little dot with a right mouse button click so you grab that with the right mouse button and you can grab that and move that wherever you want in the design. So if you wanted to put that position in the center of that circle, you can put it there. Um, if you have a feature you, you want to line up with something else on the part that you're um, going to engrave on, you can you can use that as a relative position in the, the part you're engraving on to, to correctly align your parts. The other thing, once that's moved there, you can use your arrow keys again to move the, the laser head and it'll it'll move the design and the laser head, but the relative position of the laser head to the design stays the same. So now going back to the default position. So to get an idea of what these things actually do, let's close up the laser. Turn on the power and we'll engrave these uh, parts on here. So I, would, I have set at low power and for both the vector grip and, and vector cut. We'll get these. Um, features put in there and then we'll be able to move around move the head around and show what what it's actually looking like uh, we'll do the vector engrave also okay so now can see the features so now it might be easier to see what's going on now with the now if I right click on the on the uh, on the dot and move it over I can put that in the position and, and you can see that moves right right over where the the center of that hole is and, but the the relative position of where the design is going to end up being cut doesn't change when when we move in, in these in this way um, So if I if I go back, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna turn the laser back on, but I'll I'll run through the um, uh, through the engraving process so it'll engrave without actually engraving, but you can see my little uh, dot showing where where the laser is, is aiming. Um, and let's so now I have it positioned here and I'm gonna hit vector cut. And you can see it's following those lines. It's engraving in the exact same place as it would if we started if, when the laser head was in the original position. At the end of the cut, the the laser engraver is going to go back to um, the original uh, the original position up in the upper right upper left hand corner. Um, that's just the common reference position for the laser. So that's just where it always goes back to. So maybe that's a little funky if you're trying to engrave. But once you've engraved once, 
you can hit it again, it'll go back to the same place. You don't have to go back and find your, your home again. I mean, that, that is the home relative to the engraving that you're currently doing. So the other thing, um, you can right click again, drag, and say you can't get that close enough to where you wanna be. You can, you can, also, you can also hold down the Alt key and move that, um, move the, the, the dot uh, using the arrow key. So Alt and the arrows on the keyboard, not the arrows on the screen. And then if we put this down oh, 0.5 millimeters, you can move it around. And, and this is again, holding down the Alt key and pressing the arrow buttons on the keyboard. So then if you wanna move the whole design Let's move it back up so you can see what's happening a little better. Also, without dragging, you can use the control key and move the whole design. And again, that'll move the design along with the along with the laser head. Um, so let's go back to the home position. The other way to handle things like this, um, say we unlock the rail and move the move the laser head around by hand. You don't necessarily know now getting this line back up might be difficult if you didn't if, if we didn't have all these features so what what we could do is say well i don't know where my laser head is but i know where there, there's a position on the on the design that i can find so i can go and put the laser head right on that right on that circle and then I'll do a little bit of fine adjusting here. Get that right where I want it to be. So now the dot is on in the laser is exactly where I want to be. But it's not lined up with my design. Obviously, it's, it's not even shown on, on the video right now. But if I unlock the rail, come back over here, and I have the... I can just manually put the laser back on that dot or back on the crosshairs or whatever my reference feature is. And now if I go back and um, hit vector cut again, because because my laser head, now the machine doesn't know where the laser is because, or the, the software doesn't because I've manually moved it around. But I know I'm in the right place because I just manually put it in the right place. So I can hit vector cut again and it's gonna go follow those same lines um, that it was before. So obviously you wouldn't be vector cutting over the same features you've cut before. This is just kind of a demonstration to show how you would line things up. So you have to find a reference feature in your design and a reference feature on the part you're engraving on and that's, that's how you can do that. So another feature that you have to figure out where you're gonna be would be to go into tools and trace design boundary and it's gonna, when you open that screen, it's gonna take a little bit of time to, to calculate where the design boundaries are, but it's gonna basically make a, a convex hull around the design, which is the shown by the green line. And you can actually make that, uh, that green line closer or farther away from the design. So if you wanted to have, say, a, a five millimeter gap around the design, you just put in five in there, and then so now you're now you could actually cut out the part, the design, and then have a boundary, um, and that boundary is going to be a convex hull, and that'll that'll also take into account uh, if you have any raster engraved features. Also, it'll it'll do a convex hull of those of those things also, and you can do a uh, you can choose to have the laser on during trace or laser off during trace. Um, I'm going to set this back to zero just to show what it what it does. So that's back down there. I'm going to trace the boundary at 20 millimeters per second. Let's close the laser up again so we can have it active. Run it. We'll do it. We'll do a trace. So that's going to. So one way you might want to use this is to trace the boundary on the on on the inside the laser.
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that again, but this time I'm gonna put a five millimeter gap around there just for just to show what that does. So, and you can actually have a negative gap also if you wanted to do that. This is another way to to have it uh, show you where the design's gonna be. Okay, now that that's done, you can open this back up. Turn off my air assist, which is a, my air assist is was making noise, but it wasn't actually helping anything because the, the it's it's not on the head. Um, so that's another feature that you can use um, to help decide where it is, and and again you can you can run that same thing if you if you choose the laser off unselect the laser on it's gonna it's gonna trace just the boundary without the laser on and that might give you a visual indication of where you where you want to be or where your design is going to be um, especially if you have the laser if you have a red laser pointer or something like that like or like my setup um, with the with the ring of LEDs in line with the laser, um, I guess just to kind of double down back on on the on the corners. Another way to help locate your design is you can move to the corners, turn the laser on, and do a test fire. And by doing that, you can get um, the four corners set up. With, with just with tiny dots and then um, then you'd know where each corner is um, if you were trying to locate your design that way so now you have just very very tiny tiny dots right in the corners of the design. And and remember we made the, the boundary um, five millimeters outside the design, so it's it's actually um, exceeding the design space a little bit. Um, but that was that was the original intent of these these corner uh, points. When I was using laser draw when I first received my laser, I would I would hit the 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 boundary uh, the command to make the, the square boundary of the design and I would sit there and I'd wait for it to hit the corner and just turn the laser on for a short second on each corner so I knew where the bounds were because I didn't want a big square engraved um, so this was this was my improvement on that or my preference was to just be able to go to the corners and make the dots so I can visually see where they're going to be without making a, a, a lot of engraving on, on whatever um, part that I wanted to, to be working on